Us. Us. I was sitting here with my buddy Aiden and we didn't realize the time. Hi, Us Torbjorn. Us young, good morning. Sorry, can I join you last week? I was in the mountain skiing. Oh, what a life you live. Good. Welcome, Torbjorn. Bill, Us, good to see you. Paul. So Torbjorn's in Norway. Paul's in Germany. Frederick's in Sweden. Paul's in good old Brisbane. Max in England. Matt gets up at 5 a.m. to do. I've got to hand it to you, man. You're a better man than me. Um, you know, just, I hear the pencil. That's a pen I was looking for. <laughs> you know, not not much has been happening in my life lately. Oh, a couple of these arrived, by the way, a couple of thousand. Awesome. So, hey, Gaz, but check this out. This is This is the book. It's finally arrived. And... Look at this beautiful embossed cover. Isn't that just something else? They did a really nice job. So I'm pretty happy with it, and I've started to send them out, and voila, that's it, Sharon. Voila, finally. So um, I've got about seven or 800 to send out, so please be patient, but we're getting there. Now let me introduce you to Aidan Obeid. Okay, I know he's ugly, but don't worry about that. Aidan's... <laughs> from the, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Aiden's from the Wollongong Dojo. Wollongong, for those who aren't Australian, uh, is south of Sydney. So he's about a thousand kilometers south. And uh, Aiden's come up to train for the weekend. And I've got a feeling he's gonna teach us more than we're gonna teach him. Aiden's 15 and he's, he's got some great technique. And check this out, Aiden made that for me. Look at on the side, you see the profile of that kicker? Um, just trying to, you see that kick, isn't that cool? And the profile, the, the statue of Masoyama, how cool is that? And then look, that's my name. I know he spelled it wrong, but don't tell him that. He'll be upset. No, he didn't really spell it. Yeah, late push-ups. i got to do push-ups because I was a minute late. But isn't that cool? And Aiden made this, and it's actually a mobile phone stand. i got my mobile phone here. Look at that. Mobile phone stand. Too cool. Or oh, Brad. Good to see you. Brad Hansen, good buddy of mine. So anyway, welcome, Aiden. I'm going to use Aiden. Just relax your legs if you're not used to it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use Aiden today. It's a good time because I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Where's my notepad? Here it is. Um, I want to talk about loading power, the right way to load power and punches or a right way. Remember, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And uh, I was just talking with Aiden there. Um, Aiden's only 15, but he's an excellent technician. I've just trained with him a little bit just before, and already I can see that he has some great skills. He's ugly, but don't worry about that. But anyway, <laughs> he's starting to believe me. <laughs> don't. Um, so we talk about loading power and punches. We talk about rhythm and timing. Uh, and we'll go through the simple acronyms that I like to use um, when um, we're working on these things. Oh, Mike, good to see you. Today, I've got to tell you, it was the most perfect day. Wasn't it beautiful? Yeah, it was really sunny. We drove, we drove from uh, the airport. We drove from the airport up to here um, uh, along the beach of the Gold Coast, and it was just absolutely beautiful. Oh, Daniel, good to see you, man. Um, but anyway, so to start with, I just wanted to talk about some simple principles, fundamental, as you know, one of the things that I like to work on uh, is the 80-20 concept, the Pareto's law, I want to try and find the key 20% that gives you 80% of the benefits, okay, not that you ignore the 100%, you just focus your energy on that, and this is why we use the, the acronym BRATS, for uh, and BRATS is within yourself. BRATS is the acronym you use when you're working on developing power within you. Bald BRATS is what you do when you're working with someone else. So if I can remind you, BRATS stands for balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, and speed. Now I wanted to talk about rhythm and timing. Remember in Musashi's Book of Five Rings, he says, there is timing in everything. But the word, this is why I'm working with, uh, well, I'm, I'm discussing 
uh, with um, a, a very well-known, respected martial artist in America to rewrite his Japanese background. We're going to uh, do a new translation of the Book of Five Rings. And in that, one of the things we've been discussing is when Musashi says there is timing and everything, the word that he uses in Japanese is actually the same word for rhythm. So in reality, rhythm and timing need, mean the same thing. It's just applied in different ways. So breaths, balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, and speed. When we're talking about developing your own skills, timing is the coordination and rhythm within your own body. Okay? Rhythm and timing become the same word. When you're dealing with someone else, timing then is about the coordination of you with their movement. Okay, so that's a, a fundamental difference between rhythm and time. Just cross your legs if you want. Um, uh, rhythm and timing depend on the context. Rhythm and timing within yourself or rhythm and timing within a relationship with someone else. And as you know, um, the best fighters have extraordinary timing when it comes to their opponent. But developing skills is about extraordinary timing, coordinating all the parts of your body. Is that fair? Yes. I've got to keep checking with Aiden because Aiden's 15, but he, he, he knows a lot. And I'm going to use Aiden to demonstrate the concept of rhythm and timing. So once again, I want to talk about, like Masayama said, He'll, he just keeps repeating the same thing over and over till he thinks we've got it. <laughs> but he never stopped, so I guess we never got it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just look at some mitt work. I'll put my mitts on. Could you pass me my gloves? I'll, I'll put my mitts on. Um, these, by the way, are the best inner gloves you've ever seen. These little cotton gloves, I get them. Well, I used to get them when I traveled to Hong Kong. I get two dozen pairs for like three dollars um but they're really good you wear them inside you never wear leather mitts or leather um uh, things without wearing inners because after a while they smell so much it makes you sick but i've i've been using these for 15 years and there is no smell in them so if you always if always you can get yourself these these cotton ones are really good don't use the ones that are cotton polyester or anything like that. Uh, but they're really handy to wear inside. Okay, so when you work mitts and so on, it's really important that you discourage whoever you're working with, you discourage your student from trying to hit it too hard. That's not the objective of the mitts, okay? There's a time and place for everything. But what we want to do is work on balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, and speed, okay? That's really, really important. Balance gives you good posture and good rhythm. Uh, relaxation allows the body to generate optimal power. And you know I don't like to talk about maximal power. You're never trying to generate, not never, 99% of the time you don't try and generate maximal power because it means if it doesn't work, you've committed yourself beyond what you're able to recover. You want to generate optimal power, which means you always have that percentage uh, in the percentage of control so that you can come back again if you have to. Um, the accuracy is vital because you can hit something really hard. You know that from when you hit guy kicks and so on. You can hit a thigh kick at a certain point, it has zero damage. You hit a, a thigh kick exactly the right point and it has incredible damage. So accuracy is really, really important. And this is why you need to know the, the nerve points, the nerve points in the body. Boom, 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 boom. Solar plexus up under here, here, here. The nerve points on the body are really important. And what you need to do is always be accurate with that. So when you're training or when you're working with someone, never allow the accuracy to go diminished. Never allow it to be minimized. 
that accuracy is really important all the time. So when you work mitts, even these days, you'll see that some boxing coaches use really, really small mitts, like half the size of this. Um, I think they're good, but I would prefer to use mitts like this with a little circle. So that way, if there's a little bit off, you don't damage your hand. You use a small mitt in your mitt, you can, you can damage your hand. But the whole idea is accuracy. That's what you want. You want that accuracy all the time. Um, and timing, once again, as we said, timing if when you're in yourself is all the body parts being in the right place at the right time. Okay, so that's why it's very misleading to study anything from a book because the first photo is like this, the second photo is like that, and how did you get there from here, from here to there? It, it's very misleading, right? You can do it in half a dozen different ways and five out of six are wrong. Okay, so this is why nothing beats actually um, getting in uh, the dojo and working with someone. And in the end, speed. Now remember, what are the somatics of the body? See if you can type them down because I've been over this so many times. I know you know. What are the somatics of the body? Do you know what the somatics are? You don't even know. I bet you don't even know what that word means. Oh, See, I told you he's ugly. I mean... <laughs> He's a maths and science major, so he's no dill. He's going to be a doctor when he grows up. Somatics, what are they? Somatotypes. You know what somatotypes are? Physical bodies. So somatics are the physical properties of the body. If you do a, a search in Google, I'm, I'm sure um, it'll come up. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to because I've got gloves on. It won't respond to me. Um, but somatics, we have four primary and one sub-somatic. The four primary somatics are speed, cardiovascular endurance, strength, and flexibility. They're the four primary somatics of the body that everyone has in varying degrees. And different sports and different movement philosophies demand different amounts of those. If you're going to be a power lifter, okay, the, the cardiovascular endurance is almost completely unnecessary. If you're going to be a 10,000 meter runner, it doesn't matter how many hundred kilograms you can squat. Okay, so the that strength component is less. It's the cardiovascular endurance and, and to a very large degree flexibility that you really need. The fifth one, which I call a somatic, but it's not, not widely recognized as one, but in the martial arts, I call it one. And I call that sturdiness which is the ability to take punishment. That's also a physical attribute, which is very important. Okay, but you'll notice of the five, okay, you've got speed, stamina, strength, uh, suppleness or flexibility, and sturdiness, the five S's, speed, strength, suppleness, um, uh, what's the... Flexibility. Yeah, got that speed, strength, suppleness, Kind of yeah, endurance. stamina and sturdiness. Yes, I call them the five S's. But power isn't in there. So power isn't a somatic. Everyone says hit with power, hit with power. It doesn't mean anything. The body doesn't have its own power. Power is a product of balance, relaxation, actually time and speed. Power is a combination of speed and strength. Okay, so you can teach a six-year-old kid really, really good technique and he still won't be able to hit with the power of an adult because he doesn't have um, the, the body weight and the strength. Um, so it's really important that we recognize that power isn't something you should try to hit with. Power is a product of hitting well with all the other things. Okay, so that's why it's so important uh, to break down the way you train to develop power in punches. Okay, so the first things that we want to work on when it comes to, I've, I've got a five, I've got to fold my glasses up to put them down. Normally I just put them down like this, but these these are in the way. What a bummer. <laughs> okay, so we're just going. I'm just going to put my mitts on, and also if you haven't done mitt work, and that's very very common to find in a Kyokushin dojo, you haven't done mitt work. Well, then the way I do mitts, it, it, it's really kind of nice. And if you want to start to work on mitts, there are certain fundamental rules that are very important. And one of the most important ones is don't let your hands drift apart 
so that now your training partner is hitting two targets instead of one. So most people will go hit the left into this hand, hit the right into that. I hit left and right into this hand and only use this for punch variations. Okay, so with that in mind, we're just going to work on, first of all, loading the weight. Okay, so when I hit left, I want your weight on your left leg. When you hit right, weight on your right leg. You cannot get simpler than that. Okay, the, all the variations in the world are okay, but if you just obey that one principle, that's the 80-20 at work right there. So equals MC squared suggests that mass. Well, I would get away from equals MC squared because it's a slightly different formula, Torbjörn. I think probably the best formula is the formula for kinetic energy, which is K equals, I'm typing with my glove on, um, half mass times V squared. Yes, force is mass times acceleration is more to it. But even for ours is this formula. I can't type it properly with my hands. Kinetic energy. The formula for kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. Now, if you analyze that, what that means is if you want to increase your power, don't rely solely on increasing your body weight. Kinetic energy says half mass times velocity squared. You think about that. If you double your mass or your body weight, for all intents and purposes, for our services, um, what's Doug? Good to see you, man. For all intents and purposes, mass for us is body weight. So if you double your body weight, you double the power, the kinetic energy. If you double your speed, you quadruple the kinetic energy. And that's why it's so important to focus on speed, 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 speed all the time. Never sacrifice speed for power and body weight. It's really, really important to focus. Look up the formula for kinetic energy. It's, it's a little bit funky the way I've written it because with my fingers and everything, I can't write the velocity squared the way it should be. But half mass times velocity squared uh, is the key formula that you want to be thinking about. In other words, like uh, Torbjorn says, you need to put your body weight into it, but you can't do that at the um, expense of speed. Okay, so we're just going to work some mitts now. And we'll talk about what we're doing as we go. Give us a second to get our legs back. Is that about the right height? Yeah, that's pretty good. Good. Okay, so the way I hold mitts, it's very important. Let me close that door so the light's not locking out. That's a bit better, isn't it? The way I hold mitts is very important. It's always important. Remember, you never want the mitts to come apart. So what I'll do is, see, when, I, when you hold mitts this way, so if he throws the left into this one and the right into this one, see that? What will happen is, over time, if I'm not careful, I'll start doing this, and now Aiden fighting two people instead of one. Plus, the mitts in front of my face means that the distance of his punch to the mitt is different to the distance to my head. Okay, so that could be misleading too. So this is why I choose to hold the mitt in line with my head. So now, first thing I do is I turn 90 degrees, and that way when Aiden hits with a power shot, I'm not going to tear my shoulder, okay? I can catch it like this. If I hit it like, hold it like this and hit it, I'm going to tear my shoulder over time. Okay, you get small damages. So I'm here like this. And sometimes you don't even have to talk. I can just show it, and that's a signal for him to throw the punch for me. See, like that. Okay, left. Good. I do numbers, one. Now, instead of going one, two, I'll go one, two into this hand. One, two. Okay? Okay, now I want you to watch Aiden's weight. This is really good. Aiden has never trained with me before, so I'm not going to take any credit, but I can just, within five minutes, you can see that his technique is solid. Okay? So, power in the left means weight in the left. Okay, so he throws the left, his weight's on the left leg. See that? Weight's on the left leg. Again. I'm sorry, one, one, 
One. See that? Weight's on the left leg. When he throws the right, weight comes to the right leg. Again. Boom. See how he rotates? He does it slightly different to do it. Yes, it's almost, in fact it is, it's pretty well perfect. In that, when you throw the right, what you want is your, your elbow, shoulder, lat, hip, knee, and ankle, and heel. All lined up in the target. If he was to over-rotate the foot, now what's happening is, see, his body wants to naturally go there. But if he was hitting the mid and he over-rotates the foot, what happens is some of the power is going out that way. So one of the best things you can do is soften up and just work, even on a speed bag, on a, on a floor-to-ceiling ball, one of these, is just work on the idea of rotating to the point where the shoulder, the lat, hip, knee, and ankle are all in line. If we turn around this way, turn around here, so that he's, that he's punching straight to the camera. You can see how everything's in line. He'd come back, and if he was to over-rotate like that, you see now everything's going over there, and the punch naturally wants to go there, but we're trying to hit a target here. This is one of the reasons why people miss targets all the time. Okay? So, again, I was talking to Mac the other day about a metronome. And you, and you just work the idea of tick, 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 tick. Rhythm is really vital. You can't get rhythm by trying to hit with power. You get rhythm by trying to hit with good timing through the body. So if we go one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two. Okay, do you hear that? Now, I haven't even ever had anything to do with Aiden. I've never taught him anything, but that rhythm is timing perfect. If you listen, just close your eyes and listen. One, two, three, two. You hear that? Bang, 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 bang. Perfect timing. Bang, 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 bang. It's not bang, 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 or bang, 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 bang. You get all this wrong. Okay, it's all about that rhythm. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. You hear that rhythm? Again. See that? That rhythm is what it allows you. And to start with, you can hit as soft as you want, especially because he's not using gloves today. Okay, so when you hit, you can almost just massage the mitts. Okay, nice and soft. Blah, 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 blah. See that? Again. Not even hard, he's hardly hitting it. But because the rhythm is there, even when he's hitting with that, that would be enough to make you go, whoa, man. Okay, to build power, you must have the balance in the correct leg, the weight in the left leg, you must have balance. You can never hit with a hard right if your body is balanced wrong. Okay, so balance, uh, accuracy, leverage, all these uh, distance, these are uh, parts of the ball, part of the brats. The brats is balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, speed. Relaxation allows good technique to generate power. Once again, we go one, two, three, two. Again, one, two, three, two, under, boom, two, rotate off, two, boom. See that? So you can start to work. So just listen to the language that we use. You, you code the punches in numbers because you don't have time otherwise. You can't go uh, left, right, left, hook, right. It just takes too long. This is like one, two, three, two. Okay, one, two, three, two, right. Boom, boom. Okay, rotate and three, two. Um, two, three, rotate, two, three. Okay, see like that. So you can talk in a code of numbers, but the objective all the time is never to break the rhythm, the metronomic rhythm, and never break the balance. So that always you're working on the technique, and then that little white circle in the middle becomes your point of accuracy. You'll feel it in the midst if he hits a if he hits a shot that. It's right in the middle, it'll feel solid. If he hits it right at the top, it's wrong. If he hits it right at the bottom, it's wrong. You'll feel it in the mids. Okay? So as we move around, first we're just going to work the left hand. So you see the weight goes into the left leg, and I like to bring the heel up. So one, 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 one. So let's, as you, between the one, one, just for 
One, tag your own shoulder on the way back. One, one. That's it, again. That's it, that's better, again. Good, you see that? Look at the weight, don't worry about his hand. Don't worry about his ugly face. Nothing you can do about that, but watch the weight in the leg. See the weight come into the leg now. That's what you want. Now to get power on the right hand, he rolls the right knee. He does what we call sits down on the chair. He sits down there. He sits down. See this? Everything rotates. So now he throws the two. Again. Now he, um, the way Aiden's being taught is slightly different. He throws the right and brings it back, unless he's just doing that today. What I always like to do is throw the right and let the right continue until it finds its own home again. Like that. Yeah, kind of like that. So I was taught to box by a guy named Barry Michael, and he would go here, and he put his hand here. So if he hit, he'd go one, as he'd throw to right, and yes, and you'd do that. And he'd have his hand here, though, you see, with a glove on. And as soon as he'd feel your hand and hit the glove, he'd go boom, and he with a left hook, you see. So um, it's a slightly different movement philosophy, but it's fundamentally the same. Whether it's, just, it's not the power of the punch we're talking about, it's the recovery of that punch. Okay, so we're just going to move around, and I want you to watch the way Aiden's weight stays balanced on his whole body. It's all about the way he rotates the hips, the shoulders, but at no time is he losing balance, and at no time does he lose that rhythm. Okay, so one, 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 two, one, two, under, boom, two, under, two, three, again, boom. Rotate two, one two, one two three two, one two three two, my bad, one two three two, oh, good, again, two, and a roundhouse kick, okay, so let's go again, one two three two, two, one two three two, rotate two, when we use the rotation, that's when we use the tendon reflex, so it rotates off, gets it loads of tendon reflex in the back foot. It can't happen if your heel touches the ground. So on a rotation, your heel never touches the ground. On a rotation, your heel stays up, you get that tendon reflex. So on the rotation now, he's gonna go two, and straight away and around his football, like that. You can go two, three, and load it, but for mitt work, it can be a little bit funky and dangerous, because he goes two, three, and by the time I get the mitt up, it's too late, he's kicked me. So we're just going to go two, boom, like that. Okay, so we move around. One, two, three, two. One, two, five, two. One, boom, good. Again. Under, boom, two, rotate off, boom. There, two first, rotate, boom, hit, rotate off, two, roundhouse, good. He's pulling the roundhouse, which is good too. Again, one, two, three, two. Under, boom, two, rotate off, boom. See that? Good. Now, the next thing we have to work on is maintaining balance and rhythm as you exit the dead zone. So what's the dead zone? The dead zone is right here. So he goes one, two, three, two, boom, 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 and he's still in the dead zone. So we work on the rotation and getting out of the dead zone. And then after he throws the roundhouse kick, we rotate for come around, two, three. Now he exits the dead zone by moving his body weight that way. So he throws the kick. His head goes that way, and he moves off, rotates, and he's out and forces me to rotate. See, if he throws the kick here, boom, and he stays there, and I block the kick, now it's my turn to, to rail off on him. But if he throws the kick, boom, and he moves off, now before I can do anything, I have to change my dominant head position. So I constantly have to chase him and move around. Okay, so this is why part of your drilling in class should always be never to stop in the dead zone. So as we move around, one, two, we'll move, constantly moving, one, two, three, two. Move, good, again. Yeah. Move off, bang, but put it together like that. One, two, three, two. Good, so this time I want you one, two, three, two, nine. One, two, three, two, and boom. Okay, now the nine is a broken rhythm. The metronome still goes, but it's ba, 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 and ba. So watch, one, two, three, two, and boom. See that? It wasn't one, two, three, two, bang. 
you can't do that. You can't you can't load the body properly. One, two, three, two, and boom. See that? And notice I use this mitt, not this one. I don't like that because the danger is he goes one, two, three, two, and I go here and he comes in close, and sometimes he'll hit his head even if he if he digs right in. You see that head there? See how close his head comes to the elbow? So you should never do that. You get away from that by tucking in here. So now he goes one, two, three, two, steps in, boom. See that? And what I like to do is use that, hold your hands up for the mitts, use that um, one, two, three, two. I use that movement to bring my shoulder forward there. So I use that extra beat to get my shoulder forward, and then I unwrap with the with the body rip. Okay, the left rip is different to the right. I, I call this a rip because it's into the liver. I call this a, you know, kagi ski because it's actually shocking the spleen, which is much deeper in, but technique is slightly different. Okay, but that's a neither here nor there. So we just move around. One, two, three, two. One, two, five, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. Hear that rhythm? Perfect. Listen, close your eyes, go, one, two, three, two, five. Hear that? Bop, 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 bop. That's what you want. And if you haven't got it, you've got to get it. Okay, and the best way to get it is relax completely. Don't even try and hit hard. Use a floor to ceiling ball if you have to. And just boom, 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 boom. Doesn't even matter if you don't hit it. Boom, 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 boom. So when he does it now, nice and soft. Bop, 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 bop. You're going forever. So one, two, three, two, three, four, boom, under. Three. One, two, one, two, three, two. Boom. Rotate off. Two. And then again. One, two, three, two, five, two. One, two, three, two, five. Under. Boom. Rotate off. Boom, boom. And then do the two, three on the turn. So we go. One, two, three, two, five, two. Five, one, two, three. No, one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two, five, two. Under. Rotate. Three. Good. And then you can start again. Boom. Good. Now we're going to add a roundhouse kick on the end of that. Good. Now he gets out of the dead zone. So now he does the rhythm. We're just adding on again. Under. Rotate. Now he gets out of the dead zone. So as I come in, what he can do is throw two jabs on the way out. So again. He throws the jabs on the way out, you see, and that keeps me busy. He throws the kick, moves out of range, but doesn't throw anything, I start to come in. But he throws the kick, moves out of range, he throws a couple of jabs in my face, all of a sudden, I've got to deal with that before I come in. Okay? We'll just pause for a sec there, see if there's any questions. So, you can see that developing power is not about power. Developing power is about the correct balance, uh, relaxation, accuracy, timing, and speed. So let's see what we've got here. <sighs> yeah, the transition from inertia is critical to velocity delivered. That's a fair call, Mark. And the way you deal with inertia is, I'm guessing, I'm not a scientist, okay, I'd, I'd say the way you deal with inertia is controlling balance and keeping your body weight centered within yourself and relaxation so that you don't over over bake it. Okay. Um, wow, he is very ugly. I'm um, sorry. Wow, he's very smooth. Sorry, I misread that. <laughs> Nothing personal. Bill Dufour, oh, it's good to see you, man. Vince, how are you, man? Yeah, Aiden's very fluid. That's true. Very smooth. Um, and it's a real testimony to his coaches. He's just here for a week. And it's just really good timing because I said that I was going to do um, developing uh, loading power and the punch, and what there's not a better, um, not a better uh, example of that. Yeah, Gary, see, Gaz has got his showdown coming up. He's wondering, can you borrow your legs for the grading? Oh, no worries. <laughs> good. Um, so anyway, that that's the principle. So they're the key takeaway points. Weight on left for left, heel up. Weight on right for right, heel up. Balance, uh, sorry, balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, speed, and then that's within yourself. 
So when you're, you're training for yourself, you're constantly maintaining balance. You're getting that metronomic rhythm. Bup, 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 bup. You heard when Aiden's hitting the mitts, it was never off rhythm. It was always bup, 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 bup. okay? Uh, get that metronomic rhythm because once you get that, then you can build the power into it by increasing speed and increasing, uh, well, improving, constantly improving balance because balance is what will give you the body weight. Good technique uh, and balance will give you the body weight. Is that a fair call? Yes, you, you, you can't get power in a technique if your balance is wrong. And if you don't believe me, try and throw a punch as you're falling backwards. It just doesn't work. Okay? Or even falling forwards for that matter. You might luck out, but that's about all you're going to do is luck out. Um, did you, does that make sense, that, that rhythmic, the importance of that rhythmic relaxation? It's very, very important. And working with the small mitts here, with this circle in the middle, that gives you the accuracy. And you can feel when my hands are like this. This has got, if you could see inside, there's a little ball inside and your hands sit like this so that you, you really get good. And the way I hold the mitts allows me to do that without hurting my shoulders. You know, and I'm 42 now, so the older I get, the more my shoulders hurt. So by having the mitt at that angle rather than that angle, already you can see that it doesn't make sense to have it there. You want to have it here like this. Okay, so that's the, the whole idea of um, uh, the BRATS. Remember, the acronym BRATS uh, is vital for your own training. When you start to deal with coordinating with another person, you add the bald part of the acronym. The bald part is the breathing. So you've got to get your timing and breathing right. Okay. It's very easy to get your breathing right when you're by yourself because there's no pressure. Took you long enough to pick that up, Harry. Um, the breathing is very important when you're dealing with a partner. And this is what people, one of the things that one of Masayama's students who trained with him when he was a younger man said that one of the strongest things about his kumite was his ability to read your breathing. And he would time his punches at the worst possible time for your breathing. So he'd just, you breathe in, he'd hit you right then. And you get winded every time. So the breathing part of the bald part, breathing, uh, angles, leverage, distance. Okay, so you can see what Aiden is doing is not going to work if his angles and distance are wrong. Okay, what will change a man's ability to do anything in fighting is correcting the angle, correcting the distance. Let me show you an example of that um, on the mat, for example, and forgive me because Aiden's never grappled. Okay, if he was a grappling black belt, we'd all go home. <laughs> but... He's not. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by using angles and distance. So we're here, and I'm just going to have Aiden in this position here. Now what I'm going to do is work a sweep. A sweep is I'm on the bottom, I'm going to finish on the top. Okay? What I can do here is come there. Okay, now, Aiden resists. Now resist. What I'm trying to show you is I don't have the correct angle and distance. What I do now is I just change angles and he just falls over. See that? So, once again, I'm here. As I sweep, resist. Resist it, don't let me get it. Boom. Now, resist again. Same amount of resistance, but by changing my angle, I improve my leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is nothing more than increasing the amount of my body against a smaller and smaller amount of his body. Okay? So angles and leverage are everything. And sometimes, even in grappling, distance is important. But if you can get a concept of perfecting distance through movement in karate, it changes everything. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, one of my old students, Gary O'Neill, was so good was Everyone felt that they could beat him. Not everyone. 
But a lot of the top fighters felt that they could beat him until they fought him. And then all of a sudden they realized that they could never make one of their shots work because his distance control was so perfect. He would actually move back one centimeter and that knockout kick would just go zinging past like that. But his timing was such that he'd knock you out on the way through. So I'll, I'll type that acronym in because you've heard it before, but it's really worth Ball Brats is really, yeah, it's outstanding, Mike. I got to tell you, I, he, I wouldn't be here doing this with him um, if, if, and they wouldn't have sent him here if it wasn't for that. That's 90% of it. Um, so, Ball Brats, remember that. Ball is breathing, angles, leverage, distance. That's what you have to deal with when you're dealing with someone. Brats is balance, relaxation, accuracy, timing, and speed. Okay? Now, if you work on those, work work with a, uh, a metronome, if you like. Just put that metronome on and increase and play with the speeds. I often do this when I have um, seminars. You... You work that rhythmic, that metronomic rhythm uh, is really, really valuable. And you can see um, we're not even trying to hit hard. Aiden's actually almost massaging these mitts, but there's knockout power in every shot, okay? Knockout power in every shot. So um, that's the take. That's what I want you to think about. If you've got any questions about loading power, uh, do it. In the meantime, the book, I'm so happy. If you're a, if you're a, uh, if you're a uh, Patreon member, by all means, make sure you take advantage of the 50% discount. Most mo Patreon members have taken advantage of that and they're getting two for the price of one. Um, the book has come out beautifully. It's just really exciting to see all the illustrations and photos. I redid every calligraphy in it. I rewrote, redid, redid that calligraphy and uh, redid, some I may have kept. No, I think I redid those as well. The whole book I'm really, really happy with. Uh, it's come up nicely. Uh, and I was just talking to someone about it yesterday because I delivered a lot yesterday. Um, if I kept the same font size and margin width as the first book, it would be 100 pages longer. Yeah, Brad's. Uh, thanks, Brad. Appreciate that. Don't forget to get along to Patreon. I, I'll see if I can get the link here. If you're not already a Patreon member, um, Brad very kindly joined Patreon uh, recently. Uh, and... It's pretty exciting um, because it's Patreon that has allowed me to survive these last year or so and uh, it's allowed me to do all this. There's a new, my new Patreon uh, member, Brad, and also Per, Per Hartwig has joined Patreon today as well. So thank you very much. Get along. If you think what we're doing here is worthwhile then for the price of a coffee and croissant a week you think about that if if you were to put aside the price of a coffee and croissant every week well this is what allows me um this is what allows me to do all this but anyway uh look it's a bit of a short one today that's okay it's 40 quarter two um but nevertheless i hope you got something out of that it's uh and like mike Clark said, Aiden's technique is outstanding, but his attitude is even better. Um, you know, anyone will know uh, that you don't tolerate someone with good technique but poor attitude. On the other hand, if someone has the right attitude, you'll help them along forever if that's required. So I really appreciate Aiden. He's a, he's a fantastic young man from what I've seen so far. I just picked him up at the airport today. He's from the Wollongong Dojo of Jason Baltoff uh, and... 
They've just recently joined So Kokushin last year, and we're really happy, happy to have them on board. Uh, so please throw out a lot of ideas that you may have. Remember, I say to my, ch my the children in the, in the dojo, um, what do you hit with? When you throw a punch, what do you hit with? And they'll say as one, you hit with your body. They'll never say you hit with your hand. The hand is just the point of contact. The power is the body, and that starts at the feet getting the angle alignment right with the feet, the ankle, the knee, the hip, the lat, the elbow through there. So, so also, and when we did Sun Chin and Tencho last week, we're talking about the coordination of the lower tanden, the hara, the waki, relaxation in the shoulder, and the point of contact. Uh, so those three points all come into play when it's done something. So anyway, Aiden. Thanks, man. Thank he, you. He's here until Tuesday training with us. Um, yeah, indeed. Congratulations to Jason Baltoff. Um, Jason is about 40, 42 now. Yeah. But he sent a great photo to me the other day of when I went down and did a seminar at his dojo uh, with Gary O'Neill many years ago. In the photo was Jason and he was 12 years old. Yeah, it's a great photo. And he now, he took over the dojo and he runs that dojo now. Jason's uh, a good kid himself. Um, you're going to be there, Daniel. I hope. I hope you. If you. If I know you're going to be there, I'll bring you a book too. Daniel's ordered a book. Um, Mac, good on you. Ah, Sensei Jason Baltoff. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, he's great. Congratulations to his sensei. Unfortunate, he's so ugly. Yeah, I know. There's nothing I can do about that, Michael. <laughs> yep, he's going places indeed. He works for the Australian police. Well, yep, thank you for saying that in public. <laughs> we don't like to put that out there. Yeah, thanks, Aiden. So anyway, I hope... Um, I'm sorry Aiden's only here for the weekend. I would have loved to have done more work with him, but uh, uh, nevertheless. Um, where's your dojo in Wollongong? Illawarra, uh, Unandera. Unandera. The only the only reason I know Unandera is from Lucky Star's song "I've Been Everywhere." Talamosi, Morley's, Mama Lullaby, Amber Rishab, Kilmore, Rillaba, Burstville, Emmerville, Colville, and it's in that Unandera. I'm a fellow who's been everywhere, man, like that. So that's the only reason I heard of Unandera until I knew that uh, Jason's dojo was there. Good on you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so anyway, we'll leave it early. Appreciate your com uh, your joining in. Thank you very much. Us go the knights, Aiden. He Thank says, you. "Oh, the knights, the, the dragon, the dragon." He's a dragon's man. What are the knights? Is that an Aussie rules team? Is it? <laughs> Gets his ugliness from me. That's not very nice. Okay, good on you. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Fundamental, fundamental key principles that work a hundred percent of the time. Wait on left for left, lift the heel. Wait on right for right, lift the heel. Balance, accuracy, uh, rhythm, accuracy, timing, speed, uh, breathing, angles, leverage, distance, all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. And hopefully by next week I will have mailed all the books out. Um, I've got to show you one photo too. In Australia we have a... a good friend of mine who trains regularly at my dojo, Peter Collis, and my uh, chief instructor at my dojo is Ben Arjamian. And look at that, isn't that a great photo? That's Ben's third Dan grading, and that's Pete Collis. He and I fought off twice in the final of the Australian Championship. Pete was 10 times in the final of the Australian, won five, lost five, uh, made the final 32 in the third world tournament. Uh, so you may remember that, Mac. But he was in the third world tournament, made the final, no, made the final 16, sorry, made the final 16. Um, and there's Ben. Uh, he made the final eight, I think, in the Sokyo Shin World Tournament uh, when he fought in that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's a great photo too, taken by my good friend Kevin Lynch, uh, Kevin Litchfield, sorry, who is um, my next door neighbor, actually. He took some great photos. Uh, the whole book, Pretty exciting. I'm really happy with everything. There's great photos of, of Jacques Sandalescu. The one on the left, that's him with Jack Dempsey.
he and Jack Dempsey were good mates as well. Big Jacques was also, they called him the uh, smiling assassin when he was a pro boxer. Um, so we have this wonderful history in, in Kogashin. And uh, you fought him in his showdown grade. Oh, that's very cool. Pete Collis' showdown. So we have this wonderful history in Kogashin, and, and I've done my best to expand on it and give as much as I can uh, in the book. So really, I hope you look. I hope you enjoy it. Um, people like Rochelle have ordered so many, and each one of them I've got to sign my name. So it's, I'm getting there. Just be a little patient, <laughs> Rochelle. Thanks, everybody. Us, us. See ya. See ya. Us.